starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to the webinar. Over the coming days, we will be sharing with you a number of presentations from Eurostar Conference presenters, past and present. Today, we will have a presentation with Hive Schutz and Karen Johnson this afternoon. Tomorrow, there will be a presentation from Declan O'Riordan. And the next day, then, we have Christopher Nordstrom. And we'll wrap up the Eurostar Live Speaker Showcase with the presentation from Anne-Marie Sharrett. There will also be a number of e-books made available to you from Karen Johnson and from Stuart Reid. So we'll begin now with our first presenter of the week, which is Hub Shoots from Improved Quality Services. And Hybe uh, Shoots, sorry, pronounced it wrong. And Hybe has presented at Eurostar most recently in 2013 when he presented how to become a great tester. So I'll now hand you over to Hybe. Hello, Hybe. Hi. Great. And there's my presentation. So uh, today I will be talking about hiring professional testers. And well, I have uh, I've been in recruitment from uh, from all sides and from all possible ways you can look at it. I've been a test manager in many projects, and I took interviews to hire testers. I've been a line manager in a consulting company and in a bank for uh, for quite some years and I took many interviews to hire testers. I've been in the second one business for over 10 years and I took quite a lot of interviews well to get myself hired in projects and I switched jobs five times so I guess I know what I'll be, uh, I will be talking about today. And a lot of people helped me with this presentation they are here on the slide. So why do, uh, do I want to talk about recruiting or hiring uh, professional testers? Well, if I look at uh, my mailbox sometimes, or if I talk to recruiting agencies sometimes, they ask, well, sometimes quite a silly questions, and, and they, they show me job profiles. For me, uh, I've been in the testing industry for, uh, for over 15 years, and they show me, well, that they are looking for testers with three years experience and they ask me well are you interested and well sometimes that annoys me and, and sometimes it makes me really laugh and over the years I've been talking to many people about this and well how can we solve this problem and how can we help managers and recruiters and, and people like you and me to hire professional testers to hire the best testers that are available because testing for me is about people and people are the most important part in IT I guess because it's well it's a people's job it requires a lot of creativity and a lot of thinking so you need good people so today I'm going to talk about how can you find good people and I wrote a blog post called uh, Hiring Professional Testers and I uh, presented 16 heuristics or well it became 17 and in the comments somebody added another one so today I will be presenting 18 heuristics for hiring professional testers and I know it's very hard to find really good people um, so I hope with this presentation that it, it makes people aware on how you can hire the best people. So before we start, what is professional? What are professional testers? And my blog post was inspired by Helena from Estonia who asked the question uh, after I did the presentation how to become a great tester. And she said, well, you talk about professional testers. So what are your uh, how do you define professional testers? And uh, while talking about it, she rephrased the question into, what are your heuristics to find or to define professional testers? And to me, being a professional uh, requires a lot. And I like to distinguish 
professional testers from testers by profession. Testers by profession are people who just have a nine to five job, go in, test their stuff, and go home. And well, it's okay that there those people are there, and and I recognize that they are there, but it doesn't mean I want to work with them. So, to me, being professional means that you have knowledge, you have skills, you have experience, you have the right attitude. And you have ethics and values. And that's quite a lot. And I can't def really define which one is best because it really depends on the project you're in or the job you're doing or the organization you work for. It all depends on your situation. So I like to approach a job search or the, the search for a professional tester as a problem. And you have to ask yourself, what problem are you going to solve? What is the problem? What do we need? Analyze it. Make a, a list of all kinds of characteristics you're looking for in a tester. But not only the characteristics in a tester, you need way more. Because what, what knowledge does he need? What kind of skills? What experience, what attitude are we looking for? All those things I mentioned before. And who's the person that you need that's going to solve your problem? So uh, am I looking for a test manager or a tester or a test automation expert, uh, expert or whatever? And to do that, you have to be very clear in your job description. I made a job description once which was pretty specific and it stood out to all the other job descriptions I made before and a guy applied and well he was a little bit too lightweight for the job I had but he really responded to the job description I had there was exploratory testing in there there was rapid software testing in there and he was looking for that kind of job so he applied and well uh, we uh, we hired him for another department. So my experience is if you have the right job description and you have the right uh, skills and attitude and values in there, you will find the right person. Don't be afraid that, well, it, well it, 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 a lot of people say, well, it might be too detailed and, and nobody will respond. Well, if you need a very specific person, make sure that your job description is very specific. I collected some vague characteristics from job uh, ads I've seen. Create and maintain test case suites. What does it say? What does it mean? What does it mean maintaining and creating? And, and what are test cases? And what are suites? Or a bachelor's degree in computer science? Or something related, or I think anything can do. Education, ISTQB or TMAT. What does it mean, education? Do I need to have a certificate, or do you want me to apply stuff from that, or what are you really looking for? Understand of test automation frameworks. I had a discussion two weeks ago with somebody about test automation frameworks. What are they, and, and, and what, what, you know, what there, there can be many things uh, that, that we call test automation frameworks. Experience with a full software test life cycle. Okay, I expect every tester to have experience with a full software test life cycle. And ensure that project deliverables are defect free. This is the recent one I added last weekend. Defect free? Really? And how am I going to do that? So I collected some interesting examples from the internet. And this one caught my eye because it mentions exploratory testing and it mentions you've heard from Ken Kaner's work or others. So it's very specific that they're looking for an somebody who can do exploratory testing in a certain way that Ken described. It also said 
self-motivated learning. You're able to describe how you go about learning new skills and gaining knowledge. That's very important. So they want people that are motivated to learn and that they can do their own learning. Another one is from Atlassian. And well, they describe key skills. And there are a lot of skills in here. And the interesting part that you see here is you know when automated testing is better than manual testing. But you also know that manual testing is better than automated testing. And the first time you read this, it's like, hey, this is contradicting. And that is what made this uh, job description so interesting. You are listened to. You believe it until you see it. All kinds of things they expect from their testers. New Voice Media has an interesting one where they describe the goal and they describe the behaviors uh, to go with that goal. And the translation from their goals, your goal as a tester in their organization, and the behavior they expect with this, makes this a really interesting job ad. Or test partners is looking for an exceptional exploratory tester. And they created a list when not to apply. Don't apply if you like writing test plans and scripts. Don't apply if you do not meet all the requirements. They're non-negotiable. Interesting. Or RES software, where, well, they describe important skills and values, and then they are really specific. You don't believe anything you see. You can make a developer feel ashamed when it takes two mouse clicks to crash a piece of their code, but he thanks you for helping them. So testers and developers work together, but they really are looking for that one tester that with two mouse clicks can crash software. You test everything in your life, your phone, new car, a piece of code, or the quickest route to your new job. Interesting. So if you have a job at, and people are applying to your, uh, uh, for the job in your company, if you're really specific, only the people will apply and when, who match uh, the job description. And if not, it's okay, because it's quite easy to select if you really know what problem you're going to solve. And the process on how and what and who's doing the selection and who's doing the job interviews and how are we going to work with these candidates is really important. And Joanna Rotman wrote a book about it uh, called Hiring Geeks, People that, uh, Hiring Geeks That Fit, and it's in the references later. It's a really good book. It, it describes this process in detail. And well, if you have trouble finding uh, or defining your own process, uh, read this book because it, it will inspire you for a couple of uh, really interesting uh, things. Then if you read a resume, read it completely. Take your time to really read it. I stepped in, uh, into a couple of traps being in a hurry, not reading the resumes, and then well, walking into a conversation, and then while the other guy is talking to me, I was reading his resume, and I was not really prepared, and that's, that's really bad, because the resume can tell you a lot about the candidate. It's not the only thing, but it can tell you a lot. So read it carefully, and decide upon the resume uh, if this is the candidate for you. And after that, you can check references, or you can have a phone interview, or you can uh, invite him to your company. But really, take a lot of time to read the resume. And challenge them. Let them write why they think they fit your profile. So cover letters, or, or whatever you want to call them, can be really interesting. Just put in your job ad. If you want to apply, don't send your resume, but please motivate why you think you fit our profile. Because it's okay that people don't fit your profile completely. Maybe they have a good reason why they, well, if you're asking for, uh, for, for things and, and they don't really fit, let them explain why and how they think they can compensate for it. 
or let them solve a challenge online, and I have an example of that later, uh, to prove that they have some skills and they have the skills you're looking for. Or maybe put a serious note in the last line and, and see if you, if they completely read your job ad online, because if in the last line there's something really important and they don't, haven't read that, well, that might tell you something. But there are many more things you can do. And, and it's not really that I want to go to in too much detail here, but be creative. If you have defined and analyzed your problem, then the selection part is one step in your problem solving uh, process. So this is the example I was talking about. It's for Mulia and for entry level uh, testers, but also for experience level uh, testers. They ask, okay, go test the project and send us your test report. It's really interesting because, well, it tells you something. Of course, that's not the only thing they do to, uh, to select a good tester, but it tells you something more than only a resume. And then the interview. I like to see that a candidate can do what he's talking about. So if you're looking for a test manager, let them create and present and defend a, a test strategy. Give them something to work on for, let's say, an hour. And then give them 10 minutes to present and to defend what they came up with. If you're a real good test manager, you can do that. And of course, you can't create a full test strategy for a banking system or whatever. But if you give them something simple, they can create something. And if you give them something complex, then, well, a good test manager will choose something from it and ask the right questions. And if you're looking for a tester, let them test. Let them show that what is in their resume, that they can really do it. During the interview, search for evidence. So ask questions like, how would you solve that? Or how have you solved it in your uh, recent projects? And if they talk about it, just let them give them specific examples. OK, so you created a test plan. Can you tell me what's in there? Or you've tested with a test strategy. Can you tell me uh, what was in there? And how did you uh, get to that test strategy? It's not really the product I'm interested in, it's the way they work. It's their thought process I'm interested in. And if they can explain it, well, that's really important for me. I always ask, how do you learn? And everybody will learn in his own way. People read books, other read blogs, and other people go to tra uh, training, other people work or pair with, with, with people. That's OK. I'm not looking for somebody who learns the same way that I do. I'm looking for people who learn because testers, well, testing is a job where you have to learn a lot. And I really want to see that you learn. And if you want to become better in your work, you have to learn. And if I get the chance, I let them meet the team, and see them through the organization, tell them about the organization. If I'm the hiring manager, I really want to know uh, them to get to know me because I will be their manager. But not only me, also the team they're going to work in. So show them around. Have them in your, well, team meetings or stand-ups or just invite them to be part of that for a couple of hours or a half day. or Because hiring a good guy will take some time. If you think you can only do it with one interview, well, don't be surprised to get the wrong people. I was reading Testing Circus and Alan Richardson said this, and this is really how I look at hiring people. He says, okay, I'm looking for somebody who can test, so I let them test. And he has to explain his thought process, and I want to see the weaknesses and the strengths of them. In that way, I can, well, identify how much support they need. So how much do they need to learn? Can they work on their own? Or do they need a coach? Are there any training I need to do? It's really important to know that up front. 
So let me give you some ideas how you can test a candidate. And I've asked a couple of guys, can I use your uh, your um, recruitment method? And well, here they are. Rien Kroll from Rabobank International used the brick once, and he gave a real brick to the candidate and said, "Okay, here, test this." And well, it it's 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 a shock maybe. So that tells you something about the candidate as well. And then the candidate will, will if they start describing how they will test it, uh, well, that's, that, then they, they're skipping a really important part. That's the asking the mission part. It's like, okay, what's your mission for this brick? And then Rin would answer, well, uh, I work at a bank and I'm really angry, so I want to throw this brick through a wall, uh, through a window with them. So does it tell you something? And then the candidate, well, probably come up with, with, with another strate strategy of testing this brick. The second one from Helena from Raintree in Estonia and she together with Oliver Wilson created this challenge where they give you a requirements document and a specification document and they said okay can you look at this and see how they match and do you have advices for us. And after that, in step two, they asked, okay, this is the screen of the, um, and I blurred it a little, not to give it away. Uh, this is the screen of the application, and well, given the specs and the requirement documents you've seen, can you create a test strategy for us, or can you test this for us? And the third example I want to give you is from Red Software, and well, they have a half day, and Ralph Paul Roosmaler, who I talked uh, with about this, explained to me that they have candidates come over for a half day and they have several challenges for them. And he wrote a blog post about it. It's also in the references. And they give them a logical test. They let them test a piece of software. And they also ask them, OK, given this situation, can you write a charter for it? Which is pretty interesting because, well, what is a charter? And um, what do you want? And well, they can judge stuff from this. And the three different challenges tell you three different things about the candidate. And these are things they find important. Another thing I uh, uh, I can recommend are the testing machines by James Lindsay. They look quite simple, and well, maybe they are, but it gives you. Uh, well, maybe an hour of work if you really want to describe what the things are doing or if you want to test it. So play with it. And while preparing this, uh, this webinar, I took to uh, some guys and they asked me, well, okay, testing a brick, what does it tell you? And Rex Black and Michael Bolton had an interesting discussion about that on Facebook once where uh, Rex Black showed, as, a, as it were, a, a court case that there was a test manager who was biased of hiring somebody because he let him test the pen. And Michael replied, Michael Bolton replied to that, uh, uh, that post by playing the defense attorney and explaining why it would be interesting to really test the pen. Or, uh, and he used the second candidate, who tested a pocket knife. And I think it's not really important what you give them to test. It's about how they work with you. Do they ask questions? Do they create models? Uh, what kind of, what, what are your thoughts? Can they explain why they ask questions or why they do stuff? Those things are really important for testers. So let me talk a little about my 18 heuristics. The first one is really important to understand what are you talking about. I always want to know the candidate's uh, paradigm of testing. What is testing to them? And can they really explain what they're doing? Can they explain why they add value? And can they explain how they would test in specific situations? 
The second one is, do they really love what they're doing? And are they passionate about testing? And of course, not everybody is as passionate as I am. That's, that's perfectly OK. It doesn't have to be your work and your hobby. But testing is a difficult and complex thing to do, although many people think it, it isn't. But I think it is. And to be really good at it, and to learn about it, and to persevere in it, you have to be passionate about it. So what is my context? And why is that important? Before you can do anything in testing or anything in problem solving, you have to know what your context is. What, what am I looking at? Who are my colleagues? Who are my stakeholders? What's the software? Do I have tools? Do I have environments? So there are a lot of things to consider. And it's not only before you start, but you have to consider them continuously. Because projects change over time. Jobs change over time. Priorities change over time. So there are no best practices. There are only good practices in context. And that's why you need to know what context you are in. As said before, I consider testing as a human activity. Of course, there's a lot of automated testing, and that's fine. But still, the thinking process and the steps to come to automated testing are done by human thinking. And the projects we're in are really complex. If it takes you about an hour to test a pen, well, that's a really, really simple object. Imagine how much time it would take you to test a full banking so, uh, a product. It's really complex. So there's a lot of thinking uh, in there. And yes, tools and techniques will help me. But I consider IT as a, more as a social science than as a technical uh, science. Software developing and testing is a team sport. I can't test on my own. I need developers to do stuff for me. I need business analysts to do stuff for me, or document writers, or technical writers. I need project managers, or product owners, or scrum masters to do stuff for me. And only if we work together as good as possible, well, we create awesome products. As seen in, in several of these uh, ads I showed you, testers know that things can be different. Stuff can work now, but how about tomorrow? Did something change? And, well, maybe the opinion of our customers change. And by applying critical thinking and talking with people and identifying risks, well, we will understand the product better and we'll, we'll, we have to look behind the GUI. Not only at the GUI, but also behind the, the GUI. And, and, well, things might be different there, completely different as we thought. Testers ask questions before doing anything. And I've seen a couple of really interesting examples of it where it really obviously looks very simple and you say, okay, how many test cases? And people will start answering, well, two, three. But if you really look at the context, then, well, the testing technique would, would show you two or three. But what's the story behind it? And do we consider everything? So before you start, you want to know the mission. Okay, so what's uh, what's important for you, Mr. or Mrs. Stakeholder? Uh, what's your mission? What's the information you want me to collect? Using diversified approaches is important because a certain technique will only find certain bugs. And I've seen a couple of examples in my experience of companies only using one or two testing techniques. And 
in some context it might be okay, but for a whole company using only one or two testing techniques, that's insane. There are so many bugs you can find with other techniques, and if you don't consider them, you won't find those bugs. So you have to approach testing from many different ways. I consider estimation more as negotiation because, well, I can create a test strategy and I can estimate my test strategy, but how about my stakeholders? How much time do they have? How much money do they have? What is quality to them and how deep does my testing need to be? So I might create a test strategy and then go to go to them and they say, no, no, it's way too expensive or, or well, that's it's taking too much time. So, okay, so what if I do this and this and this? And are you okay that we only test this part and not that part? And that sounds more like negotiation to me. And also, many customers don't really know what we're doing. So we really have to help them understand what we're doing to make that you know, negotiation valuable. A good and professional tester uses test cases and test documentation wisely. Mind maps are a great way of documenting stuff, but are they really the best way to do it? Or in some uh, situation, test cases, especially when you start automating your checks, are valuable. But how detailed are you going to write them? Are you still writing test plans? Because I did that in my past that are 60 pages long, really? And do you think people were going to read them? Well, I found out that my test plan of 60 pages was, was, was really cool. Everything was in there, but nobody read it. So are you going to put your effort in big, uh, huge test documentation? plans, strategy, test cases, if nobody's going to read them, or if they don't add value, think about what adds value. And it can, it, it can be uh, test cases, that's fine, or test plans, that's really fine, or mind maps. I consider everything. But make sure that it's the best thing to do in that situation. As said before, testers continuously study their craft. Things are changing. There are new developments, new methods, new approaches. Study them. And don't say on forehand, no, oh, that's not for me. Try it. Really try it before you say this is not for me. Things are changing. So you need to well, know about what has changed. I wrote a blog post about this recently. Have courage and refuse to do bad work. And I'm not saying run away if you see bad work, but if somebody's asking you to create very detailed test cases because they want to have their testing done by students who are really cheap, ask yourself, is this really the best way we're going to do this? And if they want it, that's fine, but it's not the way I work. So I will tell them, okay, are you aware of the risks? And that takes courage. Courage is not going in blindly and, and uh, well, use your sword or force to, no, courage is doing stuff that, well, it, it fears you. You're, you're afraid to do it, but you still do it because you think it's important. Testers are curious and like to learn new stuff. I am very curious and I love to learn new stuff. When I was younger, I always tried everything. And if my parents lost something, they always asked me, okay, I'll Skype, he knows where it is, because I always was always looking for stuff and, and trying st stuff out. That's the attitude I'm looking for in a tester. 
they have important personal skills and I can create a list of I don't know a hundred interpersonal skills and I've seen many discussions on the internet which interpersonal skills do testers need I don't know it depends it really depends on what you're looking for and what you already have in your team and what you expect from the people because if if somebody's a well a good communicator and another isn't they might be the perfect couple and sometimes you just want a really good tester with great interpersonal skills with less technical skills or testing skills but if you're a tester I think you should have excellent testing skills you should know your testing techniques and there are many learn them try them experiment with them and maybe even find your own and as said before you have sufficient technical skills uh, a colleague of mine works in a very uh, technical uh, company in the Netherlands and they want their testers to have real technical skills because well, they don't really have testers there developers are doing the work the testing work there but they're hiring people that well we would call testers with excellent technical skills they can script or maybe even program in that context it's really fine but I also work at banks where they're looking for well less sufficient uh, technical skills like well they don't need to have to they don't need to be programmers or they don't need to script because we don't do that stuff but maybe they need a little bit of uh, SQL knowledge or, or whatever it really depends testers learn and they are not afraid to learn what I mean with that is they're not afraid to make mistakes you only learn by making mistakes if you do it right the first time what have you really learned if you make mistakes and yes it's hard to admit that you make mistakes but I think that's the best learning and the last one is testers are happy and willing to share their knowledge they learn about the product they learn more and more about the product and about the risks and well they need to share that with the rest of the organization and the rest of their teams so am I looking for the sheep with 18 legs it might look that that way no that's why I call them heuristics heuristics are a fallible method to solve a problem or to make a decision some of these heuristics are okay in your situation others won't apply so have a look at this list read the book by Joanna uh, which is great on recruitment but it doesn't it's very specific about testers there's only one of the geeks is a tester she also talks about developers and project managers and stuff and add this list to it so ask yourself what is the problem you're trying to solve if you want to learn more the book I mentioned my heuristics Ken Kaner wrote an interesting piece Ken Kaner is a uh, is a lawyer so the first part of his piece is really about well laws and and and, and how it has uh, uh, has impact on on, on, on laws and, and well the the advocate uh, part of it and the second part is about what what can you look for in uh, in a tester and a bike did a 99 second talk at test bash don't be so bloody vague where she talks about about words people use in job ads that she, she doesn't really like. Thomas Fonnet wrote a blog post about it in two parts. As mentioned before, Ralph van Roosmalen wrote a technical recruitment at REST Software where he describes the complete uh, recruiting process of his company. The Facebook thing I mentioned by Rex Black and Michael Walton. The tester syllabus by James Back that really inspired me. Uh, well, have a different look at skills testers should have. And the last reference I want to mention is a, 
a book on problem solving by Jerry Weinberg and Donald Glass. These are my contacts, and I hope you enjoyed my webinar. Thank you very much for that presentation, Hype. We're now just going to open the floor to your questions, and to do so, we're going to pop over to Test Huddle, and let me just share the link with you again. So if you look into the chat box there, you should see a link bringing you into the discussion. I'm just going to open my screen here as well. And before we go over to Test Huddle, I just want to remind you we have another presentation on this afternoon with Karen Johnson, and she will be presenting The Art of Asking Questions. And tomorrow we have a presentation from Declan O'Reardon, and he'll be presenting Application Security Testing, Where Did It All Go Wrong? And finally, there's just one week left to avail of the super early bird offer, which can save you up to €430 Euro on your conference ticket. And you can make an e even bigger saving if you register a group where every fifth attendee goes free. And just going back here to these upcoming presentations, you can register for these we webinars on the Eurostar website as well as on Test Huddle. The webinar is now over, and I will see you in the discussion forum on Test Huddle. And thank you, Hype. Welcome.